welcome to Make Your Own Snowflake. I'm Miss Callie, and I thought since it's kind of been cold outside recently, not kind of, it has been very cold outside recently, we could celebrate by staying indoors where it's nice and cozy. I actually got my fireplace going to stay nice and warm. We could make some snowflakes that aren't so cold. All right, so I'm going to use mine to decorate around my house. You can do whatever you want with yours. Put them up in your window, put them up in your room, um, wherever you'd like. So just before we get started on making our snowflakes, I thought I could give you a quick little lesson on snowflakes and the kind of the science behind them. So have you ever heard that there are no two snowflakes that are alike or that somebody is as unique as a snowflake? Is this true? How do we know this? Um, in one just snowball, there could be millions of snowflakes. So how can we know whether they are unique or not? Um, so quick answer is yes, it is true. Uh, snowflakes are unique. As far as scientists can tell, there are no two that are alike. But to understand that, let's quickly talk about how they're made. So a snowflake is made when a teeny tiny, minuscule um, dust particle has water particles land on it and attach themselves to it. Now when it is water, the molecules move around super quickly and are all over the place. But as they start to get colder and to freeze, they slow down and they actually stop moving. And that's how you get as hard as ice or snow. Um, and when they um, stop moving, there's no way to predict how they're going to land or in what position they're going to stop. What we do know is that initially they're going to form a hexagon shape. Um, this is due to the way the water molecules are made up. They like to be in a hexagon. So that's the basic for, basis for all snowflakes, which you're actually going to see in one of the templates. So that's the basis. And then um, more water molecules might start to join this snowflake and freeze on. And this is where they become truly unique because as the water molecules land and freeze, they can do it in obviously millions and billions of different ways. They can kind of go in an offshoot, there can be pieces coming off of that, they can reconnect. Um, it's all very unique. And so that's just kind of a quick lesson on snowflakes. If you want to learn more, I put lots of links in the description box below. You can learn about the first man to photograph snowflakes, um, to see that they were unique. You can learn about the science behind it. There's a great video I've linked below for you to watch. It goes into much better detail than I have here. And uh, yeah, lots of great things and ways to learn about snowflakes are actually super interesting. But let's get started with making our snowflakes. So let me show you a couple of ways to do that. All right, so the first way that we are going to work on our snowflakes is with this hexagon template, which you'll find linked below. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and cut out our hexagon and then fold it um, per the instructions below. Let's do that now. Now, if you don't have a printer or you're unable to download it, you can just draw a hexagon on a piece of paper and cut it out. You just wanna make sure that the sides are all even. Actually, what I'm going to do before I fold my hexagon is I'm going to actually trace it. Um, so that way I've got another one. So I only printed out one copy of the template. But by tracing it, I can uh, try again if I need to or want to. There we go. So I can cut that one out later if I want. So now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and fold. So you'll see that it says to fold in half. Fold in half, and then we're going to fold this bottom corner up to this corner, and it gives us a diamond shape. So we're going to fold in half again, and again. So this is going to give you a pretty tiny little triangle to work with. Think about that's the kind of hexagon we started with, and this is the little triangle we're working with. Okay, and now 
we can just start cutting. Now this is where you can have kind of like a free side, or um, free form kind of way of doing it. So I'm gonna start by, see what happens when I cut off that tip. I'm gonna make little triangular cutouts here. Now because this is so thick, it is hard to cut through, so you may need help for this one. Or, um, there's the different layers, so you could maybe do, unfold it, do a triangle cut here, it's a little easier, and then I'll fold it back over and I can use it as my guide to cut through the rest of the layers. You wanna make sure that you're keeping them even, because that'll keep your snowflakes symmetrical. Do that, maybe I'll do kind of like a rounded, Kind of cut out. Can super round, but there we go. So let's see what this looks like. Now, one thing to note is that when you are doing it this way, it will make sure that your snowflake is symmetrical. So you'll see that this is in here, and these cuts are here. So you're gonna see it's not the best snowflake, but it is one that I made just kind of trying it myself. So that's one way to do it. Another way is by using this website. Okay, so with this website, we're going to use our hexagon template again and cut it out. There we go that to the side. Again, we're going to want to do our folds. Now you can see that if I hold it this way, it is the same shape as what we see online. So I'm going to set this aside for now and go to the computer. And this is where we can try out making our cuts without committing to a snowflake yet. So we can see what we like. So this is where we're gonna work on this side. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna cut off the tip again and we'll see what that looks like. So let's go make snowflake. Cause you can actually see what it looks like step by step. So by cutting out the tip, you know you're gonna get a hole there. What if I do a triangle here? Let's go make snowflake. Oh, it'll do that. What if I cut off this corner? You want to make sure that you're connecting all of these dots so that way it knows what kind of shape you're cutting out. I'm going to cut out this corner. I'm going to kind of do it in like a weird funky way. Oh, okay. Now the only problem with this is that you can't do anything rounded. It is all very um, straight edge, so triangles, squares, things like that, but you can't do a circle. So now I've got something to work off of, and I'm going to try and replicate those cuts on my piece of paper. So you wanna make sure that it's oriented the same, with the point down and it kind of doing an angle up this way, so it'll look the same on the computer as it does in your hand. I'm gonna start by cutting off this. And I did, hmm, I did a funky cut here. Let's try to replicate that. The good thing about these snowflakes is there is no right or wrong way to do them, right? It's exactly what you create. So if you make a mistake, nobody's actually going to know unless you tell them. The other thing is, is if you love the one on the website, it might be hard to replicate. So just be mindful of that. Relatively speaking, of course, since this is quite small. And once you get the hang of this, your snowflakes don't have to be on white paper, right? They can be on any paper you've got around the house. You know, construction paper, colored paper, I'm using scrap paper. Um, it just kind of gives a different look to your snowflakes when you use different paper. And 
安全，高兴。Unfold it and see. And there we go. So it's not too far off from what I created on uh, the website. So I think that's actually pretty good. Get my hands underneath it so you guys can see against the white uh, background here. But there we go. There's our second snowflake. All right, if you're still feeling stuck, there are more links below with templates. So there are these scientific ones. So this one's gonna create an Erlenmeyer flask if we follow the instructions on this. Or we've got kind of more traditional snowflake roots. So we've got, let's see what it would look like up there if we follow the pattern. There's lots of them. I didn't even think I printed them all out. So there's lots to choose from. I think I'm gonna do this heart one. So, first thing we're going to do on this template, we're gonna cut out this square. And this is another folding technique that you can use instead of the hexagon method, you can do the square method. So you don't have to use the template if you don't want to. You can just get a square piece of paper, cut out a square from any paper you've got around the house. And then we're gonna fold diagonally. I'm gonna flip it over so that way I can still see my template on the other side. Fold it diagonally. So then we're gonna fold it in half along this line. Get a smaller triangle. And then we're gonna fold both of these sections back so only this gray section is showing. Let's see if I've done this right because I'm not sure if we're supposed to have these tails, but we will see. Yep, okay. I just double checked the website and we are supposed to have these tails, that's normal. So now what we're going to do is cut away all of this gray bit, okay? So again, this is gonna be a little bit difficult because it's super thick. I'm not sure if I was supposed to cut all the way across there, so we'll see how this turns out. Um, be careful. <laughs> and uh, these are very intricate designs, so it's really working on your scissor skills. But again, this is your snowflake. If you don't follow the template perfectly, is anybody really gonna know? Probably not, right? Nobody's looking for a perfect snowflake, they're just looking for something fun to have. All right, so I've cut away all of the gray bits. Now let's unfold it and see what it looks like. Be very careful that I'm unfolding it and not ripping it. There are so many folds and this is such a delicate template. So many intricacies to it. But there we go. There is my heart snowflake. Not bad, I think I missed a piece here maybe when I had to cut that tip because of, um, or not had to, but I did cut that tip. Um, so it should be held together a little bit more here, kind of like a donut shape if you compare that to the template. But other than that, I think we did pretty good. So the final one is a scientific template and this is the round template. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, cut out my circle from the template I printed online. They've got really complicated um, templates. You can make people's famous scientists' faces. You can make telescopes. You can make an astronaut. You can make all kinds of cool things, but I just picked this flask mainly because um, it's an easier one. And for those other ones, you actually might need, instead of just a pair of scissors, 
You might need a um, X-Acto knife or uh, like a box knife, something like that, because there might be parts that you need to cut away that aren't connected to the sides of the template. So if you do choose one of those, be super, super careful um, and make sure that you do have an adult's permission or maybe even just ask for their help um, to make sure that everything is as safe as can be. There we go, we've cut that out. Now, for this one, they've labeled which ones are the folds. So we're gonna fold the paper, all the lines indicated. So this is fold one, so we're gonna fold it in half this way. Fold two is this way. Fold three is along here. Put that back over. And then fold four. So just like the other ones, you just want to have a small section of the template or the piece of paper out um, for you to work on. Start again, you cut away the gray bits. We'll see if we end up with some flasks at the end. This one I thought might be fun because the snowflakes are quite, have quite the science behind them. It might be fun to do kind of a science-based snowflake. much quicker than the heart one. More straight lines and then less cuts all together. thing that I like about templates is that yes it's going to be creating exactly what somebody else came up with someone else's idea of what to do for a snowflake but it gives you an idea of how when you fold it whether you do the circle the square or the hexagon technique um, because you can use any of these without the templates right you just cut out a circle or a square or a hexagon and you do the folds and you can create your own snowflake but it makes you think about how to get little cuts like this because you had it folded over or that you can make a nice big circle out here by cutting off that tip of the triangle, right? So it just kind of helps for me at least um, to think about how making those small cuts now can turn it into a bigger design later. So this is all the ways to create paper snowflakes. All right, now that I've shown you how to make them with paper, there's actually some great ways to do it on the computer. So you can use Tinkercad to create a um, unique snowflake. So Tinkercad, if you haven't used it before, is a free online software that's most often used to design 3D prints. And so there's a cool um, instruction sheet, again, linked below, um, that you can work through that will show you how to make a snowflake and that's something that you, because it's made in Tinkercad, it is something that is possible to print it. And another way is to use Scratch. So some of you might have used Scratch before. I know um, my friend Daniel has shown some videos with Scratch, um, with Kirby the turtle and all kinds of fun things you can do for that, making games. Um, but it is a coding software so you can use it to make the snowflakes and you can even have the computer help with the randomization of it as well. Now I'm not gonna outline that today, so that will make this a very long video. But again, I put those resources down below, so I really encourage you to check out that description box for all kinds of great things for you to do and to keep working on your snowflakes. So I just wanted to say thank you all for joining me for this program. I hope you had lots of fun, learned something new maybe about snowflakes, and um, 
made some great decorations. I can't decide if there's a funky science-based one or my super intricate heart one is my favorite. But I do know that I had lots of fun making these and I plan on making a lot more. Um, feel free to share your snowflakes with us, especially if you've come up with something unique and creative that we haven't seen before. We would love to see it. You can tag us on social media or email it to us. I hope you guys had fun and have a great day. Bye!